Francis Ford Coppola talks to us in Oviedo, Spain, where the now legendary filmmaker received the Princess of Asturias Arts Award. The Italian-American creator of the Godfather saga and Apocalypse Now tells us about his early years and the way he works. Francis Ford Coppola, thank you very much for being with your news today. Uh, how do you feel to uh, be honored uh, with a career achievement award? Do you feel like a proud for your accomplishment or like a little bit nostalgic? Well, frankly, I'm a little shy about, about it. Uh, all my life, I, uh, I wanted to be one of the, of the group, you know. I, uh, I was, uh, when I was young, my father moved many times to where we lived, so I never had any friends. So I was always an outsider. And I always wanted to be one of the friends, you know. And, and when you when you become so celebrated and receive such a wonderful honor as as this is, then in a way you are also an outsider in, in the other end. So, but I am very proud and, and honored and appreciative. You've said many times that you don't want to do commercial films. You want more independent movies to do now. The time for the big Coppola productions is over. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. I mean, only only time will will tell and permit, you know, because... But what I mean to say is, uh, even when I was younger, I was interested in the more, uh, more uh, independent, more experimental films, films that try to understand what cinema could be. Uh, now, uh, then, when I was doing the so-called big films, um, uh, there was, it was a little more, there was more uh, f flexibility. Today, the big films are all some kind of Spider-Man, Batman, this man, that man, another man. It, 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 it Superhero seems, movies. Yeah, they seem to me just like products. I don't, think, I don't think they're made because someone has to make them. They're made because someone has to make some money. No one, you know, no one invests in a film to to make something new, they invest in a film to be sure they're going to get their money back. Risk is good. Risk, risk is how you move forward. But if no one wants a risk, then then it doesn't interest me. Let me quote you now uh, something that you said in the past. What the studios want now is risk-free films. But not taking risks in arts is like not having sex and then expecting there to be children. Well, that's true. I, I don't know when I said that, but. But uh, there has to be risk. Art, art is risk. It always was. You, you, if you're sure that what you're going to do is going to be wonderful, then it probably won't be wonderful. Uh, you've said that the real price for you is to make films that 30 years, 40 years after, people still remember. You accomplished that with uh, Godfather Saga, uh, Apocalypse Now. But it was in the 70s and 80s. What happened next? Well, you know, again, uh, the films that are now considered classics were made 30, 40 years ago. The films I made after that hasn't been 30, 40 years yet. So we'll see what are classics and what are not classics. But, um, but I'm interested always in um, trying to break new ground and, and, and that's my pleasure. I, I, I make films for pleasure. I don't make films to make money. I don't need money from films. Could you tell us a little bit about your next adventure? Ah, well, <laughs> when you talk about your adventure, then it's difficult to do it because you get a satisfaction. You get an audience hearing, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. And to talk about it is like letting the steam out of the steam engine. So I can't say too much, but uh, it's, uh, what I'm working on now is, is maybe more ambitious and bigger as a film than anything I ever did. You know, the one film I did that was a, a, a so-called commercial type film that was experimental was Apocalypse Now because uh, that was a very crazy uh, enterprise. At that time, the studios wanted nothing to do with the Vietnam War. And I went alone and I borrowed the money. So I was basically the one who financed it. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I, I, I was afraid, of course, but, but I was taking a big chance with Apocalypse Now. But that's why it's interesting. You know, that's why uh, the script wasn't gone over beforehand by the people putting up the money, saying, oh, do you have to do this? Do you have to do that? Do you have to do that? Can't you make it more like uh, the Guns of Navarone, you know? So 
I mean, everyone understands this. Uh, would, would you put money in a film that probably the director said, I'm not sure what I'm doing? Who would? Talking about Apocalypse now, do you think this movie helps today to understand uh, the ongoing conflicts? Well, what the theme of Apocalypse now deals with really is a question of morality, you know, because so many people say we are the good ones, we, we have morality, and the terrorists, they, they have no morality, they're the bad ones. That's already a lie. So what, what the Apocalypse now hates more than anything else is a lie. If you're going to do something, then you have to be honest about what you're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. The terrorist very often is only a terrorist because he doesn't have an army. It's easy for the country that has an army to say, oh, we, we, are, fighting, we are fighting terrorists, but the terrorists are, are fighting with, you know, whatever they can pick up in their hands and courage. So, you know, there's, if, we wanna, if we want to understand the world today and solve these terrible issues, which normal people pay the price, I mean, these millions of refugees who did nothing, uh, then you have to stop lying. About your career, how important uh, was Marlon Brando for you? Well, he was a great man. Uh, aside from an actor, he was uh, a really genius man, just in what he thought about. And I don't use the term genius very, very often. I may be in my life, I knew two or three people I would say were geniuses. Marlon was, because he thought in a totally unique way. And, uh, and he was a man filled with love. Was it difficult to direct him? No, no, because uh, I would just bring props that would interest him, or I'd put, a, put an animal in his hands, or put some Italian cheese or cigars, and he would do naturally what he would do. To direct him, you just said, can you be more angry? Could you be less angry? You never talk to him like, uh, you know, with the vernacular of the acting. He didn't like that. Your family is full of film directors. Uh, your daughter, your son, uh, Sophia, Roman. Do they come to you, like, very often, say, like, Daddy, uh, can you help me with this? Or what do you think about that? Well, they still do, but, of course, as they get older, less. But the younger ones, like my granddaughter, who's Giancarlo, who's only 28, she asked me all the time, and, and the others did too when they were in their 20s. Now they're in their 40s and 50s, uh, and, and so uh, they're more shy or they're more sure of what they want to do. But even once in a while they ask, and of course my wife has just made the first film of her, her career when she's 70, 79, and she asks a lot of questions. So, so I think... Uh, as, you be, as they become more confident, then they don't need me so much. Francis for Coppola, it was an honor for Euronews and for me to talk to you. Thank uh -huh. you very much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you.